Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at revision mode, which is the tool that's going to help us when we're looking at line changes uh, using screenwriting software. So once again, I'm gonna ask you to please make this video full screen while you're watching it. Uh, that way you'll have a much easier time seeing where I'm clicking and what I'm doing, so you'll be able to try it yourself. Speaking of trying it yourself, if you wanna go and do that and open up your files and do it along with me, that's wonderful. Please, please feel free to put me on pause, go and try it yourself, come back, uh, watch it again if you need to, uh, whatever your process is, that's perfectly fine. Uh, so we're, we'll get started. As you can see, we're going back to our old um, Much Ado About Nothing uh, script, the one that we used in lesson two. Uh, so you can go ahead and open that up on your fade in. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do actually is to show you how to lock the pages. So imagining that we just got the script, we're going to perform Much Ado, um, and you want to get it ready to print out to give to the cast and the crew and whoever else needs it. Um, the first thing you want to do is lock the pages. So that is in the production menu and lock page numbers. And that's it. It is now done. Uh, and we'll take a look at um, how that looks when it's in function in just a moment. So uh, then you would print it out. And as soon as it's printed, you want to put it into revision mode. That means that any changes you make to the script from, um, from then on will be tracked. Um, if you haven't yet read uh, the blog post about color schedule, I really recommend you go back and check that out and then come back and join us because that will sort of detail the whole process. So imagine we have printed it, um, what we're calling the production white draft if we're in television. Uh, the first thing we want to do is put it in revision mode before any changes are made in rehearsals. So we go to revisions, that's the production menu again, and then click on revisions and we get this little dialog box. You can see here the colors that I was talking about uh, in the color schedule. Uh, white, blue, pink, and it goes on buff salmon cherry all the way to tan. These are This is sort of the default uh, order of colors in film and television. Not every production company uses the same colors or the same order, but uh, we have to start somewhere. So um, we were in white and that's already been printed. So that revision is done. Now we want to go to the next one. So we're going to click blue. Um, I'll go and show you how to change these settings in just a minute, but I wanna give you an idea of what the function does first, and then we'll look at how to personalize it. So click it on blue uh, and okay. And would you like to relock? Yes. Um, so I often recommend actually saving a version every time you uh, change the revisions. So you printed it out, you save the white draft, and then you do a save as, save it as the blue draft, um, and when you finally print the blue changes, then you'll do a save as and save it as the pink draft. Um, you can change the names white, blue, pink to whatever you want later on. So now it's in revision mode. So what does that mean? Let's say on page two, the director's like, oh, the script is too long. We're just going, we're going to cut these lines. I, I'm not even looking for sense, but we're just going to pretend these lines have been cut. Oh, look. So two things have happened. Uh, maybe three. So look, um, we cut some text. And the text that was on the lower down on the page has moved up, but nothing from page three has shifted. Uh, so we just end up with this blank space at the bottom of the page. Um, so that way, um, all we need to do if we, if we then need to hand out a new page two with the cut lines is just print page two. It hasn't affected page three and all the pages that come after it. And one of the, thing, the ways we can know what uh, pages have changes on them is look at changed to blue. It also put a little star in the margin. So it, um, when you're looking at the page, you know the change happened in here. Um, and it was probably a cut because we've now got some blank space on the page. So the blue is an indicator for us as we're using uh, the program. You can see this page would be blue if you printed it on blue paper. If you print it out, it will not print the blue color. You're expected to have the paper to print it on. This is just a visual indication for us as we're using it uh, that there has been a change on this page. Um, so we're going on and Let's say we're going to add a line for Beatrice, added line for Beatrice. Uh, this is unlikely to happen in a Shakespeare, but it, very likely to happen in other kinds of plays. And you can see the text that got pushed off the bottom of the page is now on a page 4a. It did that all by itself. Um, and then page five is not changed. So if we wanted to print uh, just the pages that are affected by the change, we'd print 4 and 4a. Again, we've got some little stars in the margin that let us know that this is the line where the change has happened. Uh, so that's what we need to pay attention to when we get our new uh, pages handed to us. Um, so yeah, and scrolling through the text, you can easily see which pages have changes on them and which don't. 
So let's say uh, it's been a couple of days of rehearsal, maybe a week, and we're ready to hand out the new pages. Oh, this is waiting for fade in. There we go, not now. So you can go to File, Print, uh, and I believe Revisions is black and white. So you do have the option of printing. You saw some of the, the new text go in as blue. So you could print it with uh, blue, text, uh, blue text in it, but we're just going to select black and white. Pages here. We can, instead of typing in the pages, which means that we have to go through and say, well, we made a change on page two. We made a, pa a change on page four and page 4A. You can click revisions. So what do you want to print? You want to print the blue revisions. Uh, I don't have a printer hooked up, but I want to see if I can. Yeah. So I'm going to say print to PDF just so we can take a look at what that looks like. So all we did was click one button, print the revisions. I'm call this, oops, I'm going to call this blue revision pages and save it. And then I'm going to go in and I just want to open this so you can see. We're opening blue revision pages. So what is included in there is a page two, page four, and page 4A. So it did all of that work for us. It knows what pages the changes are on. Um, we just click that, print me the blue, the blue revisions. Um, and it has done that print to PDF. You print this one file with three pages in it and you're done. So this is one of the, the best functions that I, um, and I really love it about the screenwriting software. It makes line changes so much simpler. So, that is how it works. If you want to get, if there's anything in here that has felt a little fast or you want to get a better understanding of it, um, go back to the, it's time to talk about color pages, uh, the color schedule blog post. That one will have some more explanation of it. And also you can look at uh, locking pages will change your life because I truly believe it will. Those two blog posts over on the website um, will catch you up if you're feeling a bit lost. So let's say we don't, you know, we're working in theater and we're not working in television and we don't want to call them blue and pink and that's only going to be confusing to us. So we can go back to the production menu, back to revisions, and there's this little edit button in the window. So if you click edit, um, you get this uh, slightly larger dialog box. So white, we don't want to call it white. We want to call it the first draft. And so the color is white. Blue, let's say, second draft. And if you don't want the colors, uh, the pages to turn blue, you can just set them all to white. Uh, if the color thing is really not your jam, um, because you don't need to be able to track it visually, the, the program will track it for you. If you just want your entire script to look white, uh, you can easily do that. Just set each color to white as you go down. Pink can be third draft, and you can just go on and on like this. Um, set pink to white. Uh, it will only change settings for the document that you're working in. So you don't need to worry that you're going to mess it up for anybody else or for any other um, script if you're using colors uh, for another show. That's cool. Uh, and you can keep on going down the list. Uh, this little mark here is the star that it puts in the margin. You can make it anything you want. If you wanted it to be an ampersand, uh, if you wanted it to be a number or an exclamation point, like every time we do uh, first draft changes, we have a little one in the margin. Every time we do second draft changes, we have a little two in the margin. You can make it almost anything you want. You could probably, I wonder, yeah. You can just type a bunch of things. Um, you could have a whole word in the margin there if you wanted to. And when you've got it all set, I'm going to put the star back. When you've got it all set up the way that you want it, you can actually save these settings. So if this is the way you want it and you're gonna do, you know, use the same thing for every show, just like we saved a template with the elements, you can save a template for your colors. So we would save this uh, and here there's the option. You can also, if you only want first, second, third draft, you could go through and delete the rest of them. You can add more, which is what would happen if in television you were going um, white, blue, pink, whatever, and you get to the end and you need to do uh, second white, you need to do third white, which is not unheard of, uh, fourth white, depending on how things are going, you can just keep adding more and more revisions every time you print. So when you print, uh, at, we went and printed our blue pages. So that's the blue revision done. So then you would save that as the blue version, save as a pink version, and then set the revision color to pink. That's the one thing you need to remember. Every time you've printed a set of pages to distribute, part of your uh, routine needs to be save a version and then set the new uh, set your new version up with another 
revision color. Uh, if you forget to do that, you're going to end up printing old pages and new pages together if you use that revision trick. So then you'd have to work out which ones you already printed and then list in the which pages do you want to print the new one anyway. It gets confusing. So if you can just remember, once you've printed a set, you start a new revision color. It will make your life much simpler. Anyway, we were talking about we want to save these settings because this way you don't need to go in in your prep week and waste time setting it up over and over and over again. You're like, this is my template. This is what I like to call my color changes or my revision changes. Um, you just click save once you've got it all set up. Um, it's got the extension revision set, which differentiates it from the uh, dot fade and dot template that we used for elements. Um, so untitled, so I'm gonna call this test because we're just playing around. Um, test.revision set and uh, save it wherever is convenient for you on your computer. And then, so when you open the next document, uh, let's say okay, and you see because I changed the second uh, blue to second draft and I made the second draft color, second draft color is white, the page that was blue here that you could see has now gone white. So that way your whole script would just uh, look in the same color and you wouldn't have to mess around with the funky rainbow settings. All right. So we've done that, and I was going to show you, let's start file new. Um, and we were going to go to production, revisions, and see we're back. This is a new document, so it's set back to the default. It's got our colors. Click on edit, and then you can load. Um, there it is, test.revision set. So this is the document, that, or the, um, the template that we created uh, in our last document. So you just load that in here and look, it has changed to the settings that we set uh, in our other document. So this way you could just load it up and you don't need to worry about the colors. It will be the same for you every time. So in your, in your sort of stage management toolkit, you'd have a folder with your elements template and with your um, revision sets template and all that kind of stuff. So you start a new document, you load in these templates and you're good to go. You don't need to spend time messing around with the settings. So that is revision mode. Um, and it's also, we took a look at locked pages because we've talked a lot about those. If you have any questions about either of these things, how to tinker, if you have specific settings that you're wondering about, please, please shoot me uh, an email or send me, a, uh, leave me a question on the website. If you have that question, I'm sure somebody else does too, and that way I can answer it for everybody. So yes, thank you so much for listening. Um, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.